several businesses in downtown Charleston were damaged last night. I sat down one-on-one -on -one with City of Charleston Councilman Harry Griffin for the special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Harry J. Griffin, welcome back to Quentin's Close-Ups. What's up, man? Always good to be here. Likewise, I appreciate it greatly. Well, as you know, Charleston is right now reeling from the rise that happened just a couple of hours ago. Mm -hmm. As a Charleston resident and as a Charleston City Councilman, how are you right now? Well, these last uh, few months have been really tough. Uh, you know, we, we saw COVID come, and um, it's still here, but um, we had to shut down a large part of our city. And then we saw some heinous acts of violence um, in both Georgia and Minneapolis. Um, one was just truly heinous um, in the video that was released, and Ahmaud Aubrey, his death was, was just wrong, characteristically wrong in every way, shape, and form. And then George in Minneapolis and, and what that police officer did. Every police chief around the country is stating that it just was wrong categorically in every way, shape, and form. I agree completely. Um, and we have to make sure that our Charleston police officers never use tactics like that. That's got to be our, our mission. You know, we're in the middle, still in the middle of a racial bias audit of our police department. We have to continue to push forward. Um, to make sure that our officers are always following the proper procedure. But then, you know, you saw a great moment uh, yesterday afternoon right. with a really great peaceful protest. Started at 2 o'clock and about 5 o'clock it ended. The rains came for right. about an hour. However, when the rain stopped and the sun went down, some bad actors came out. And we saw a behavior in our city that we've never tolerated before. We still do not tolerate it to this day. But we've never even seen that behavior in the past. Even after Mother Emanuel, after Dylan Roof committed the most heinous act in the history of this city, the survivors and the families of the, of, of the perished, they stood up and said, we still love you and we're going to pray for you and we forgive you. Last night, we had people that were not originally part of the Black Lives Matter protest, who came, showed up in our city, fired gunshots in the buildings, set police cars on fire, burned the American flag, destroyed several of our businesses who had been shut down for months due to COVID, who have only recently reopened. And when we woke up this morning after our curfew ended and we looked around, King Street, Market Street, Several of the restaurants that off of those streets were in disarray. So this morning we had several hundred Charlestonians meet in Marion Square with shovels, brooms, trash cans, and we put this city back together. And we've been doing that for the last several hours. And I'm glad we were able to get together now, but we've been working and they're still working as we speak. Right. We're getting ready to have an emergency city council meeting in just a few minutes when this is over um, and make a decision about a curfew for tonight. Let me go to the mayor's statement. He said this quote, the murder of George, George Floyd, that is, has rightly caused outrage here, in the, here and across the country. And while we are as Charlestonians strongly support all the good men and women who are peacefully and lawfully protesting that terrible crime, we cannot and will not condone acts of violence and vandalism in our city. What exactly did you hear about the vandalism and violent acts last night? Well, like I said, the, the protest was very peaceful. Um, you know, it was it was perfect, really. It lasted for about three hours. It went through the majority, the heart of downtown. It was very peaceful. Um, it was a really powerful statement. You know, basically tasking our Charleston leadership and leadership around the country to step up um, and promote better relations uh, between our officers and, and the African-American community. Um, and really, we need to make sure that everybody, no matter what race, no matter what color they are, no matter what religion they are, no matter what, when they're pulled over or they have an interaction with a police officer, that they're treated fairly. So at, at the end of that rally, like I said, it was almost what I would say, it was kind of a perfect storm. The way the rain came, it dispersed all of the really good people that were in that that uh, that protest. Right. Um, it was really a rally. It, it was a great, great thing yesterday. 
But after the rains came and the sun began to set, the crowd had gotten pretty big. It was around 2,000 people at its, at its peak, I would say, close to it. And so yeah, we're left with a couple of hundred people who didn't actually care about the movement at all, but wanted to act on some of the other violence that has occurred um, after some of these rallies in other parts of our nation and immediately attacked restaurants, uh, corner stores, right. and and really caused some significant damage, damage like we've never seen in Charleston. How many businesses were actually damaged last night in your mind? I'd say at least 40 or 50, and at least at least that number uh, had at least at least one you know section of their glass on their their storefronts broken out right. I saw bullet holes in the glass um, I saw liquor bottles that had been thrown in to break windows I saw rocks that were thrown in to break windows we had a we had a furniture store literally on fire last night we had things happen in the city of Charleston violence that has never been condoned never and really the only thing you could even you could even characterize anything similar was the 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 nurse um, strike in 1969 50 years ago right but they did that very peacefully as well and blocked off streets for that sure this was just straight up violence by just a small group it's it's always that that one percent that don't have the best interests of the other 99 percent in mind and really tried to put a damper on yesterday's uh, peaceful protest. But, you know, my message was, let's remember yesterday for, for those three hours, from two to five, when that was a really great, powerful movement. And then today it will hopefully be remembered as the day that we picked up the pieces and got back to our lives. And tonight is going to be the big night. If we can do what other cities around our nation haven't been able to do, which is to limit the violence to just one night, you look at Minneapolis, you look at Detroit, L.A., Chicago, New York, right. even down in Nashville, multiple nights. We don't want this to be a rotating thing. We don't want this to happen again. We came out as a group, a strong, united city, Charlestonians of every race, every ethnicity, all backgrounds came together and helped put, put our center of commerce back together, King Street, and we cannot allow it to happen again tonight. Again tonight. What exactly do you hope that the Charleston City Council will do to make certain that doesn't happen? Well, we're going to have a meeting in just a few minutes, and we're going to put a curfew in place much earlier than last night. The curfew didn't start till 11 o'clock. We didn't vote on it till after 10 o'clock. That's not a, very, a lot of time to prepare. We were not prepared to have crowds that were dispersed causing havoc in multiple sections of our city because if you looked at our officers what they did is they formed a line right uh, and they marched in a line right they didn't break apart and handle things one-on-one -on -one. they did they really followed proper procedure last night if we would have had more time we could have gotten other officers from other parts of the city of our city but what we ended up having to do is Berkeley County Charleston County North Charleston Mount Pleasant right. Even I even think I saw Monk's Corner of Goose Creek. Right. They all came to help, and they were a big help. And we needed them last night, and they came through for us. Through for us. What's your message right now to the Charleston Police Department as far as support? Well, we need to do a better job of outreach. You know, we have uh, this racial bias audit that is has been going on for a couple of years. We're getting towards getting closer and closer to the conclusion. We've had some preliminary results that are being implemented by our police department. But I think the best, the only way that we're going to get through this is if we come together. And the only way to do that is to sit down face to face and have conversations, meaningful, impactful conversation that leads to direct action. Action. And we're not going to get that by just allowing the status quo to be present. We have to come together. We have to get together. We have to get all of the players to the table. And we've got to sit down and be willing to work together to, to, to have insightful change in our community. And when you talk about action, what action would the city, Charleston, city Council, Charleston City government, that is, take to make certain that the officers are protected right now? Well, if you look at our officers, they all are protected with masks, with shields. Um, you know, in this case, we have to make sure that we have the right number of officers. We can't put a small amount of officers in a big crowd. 
um, we have to work as a team and you saw it last night with with the line formations those formations were crucial they're being used all around the country and they are successful and they actually lead to less one-on-one -on -one interaction um, which can sometimes lead to bad situations and so we're doing the right things last night was we were not prepared because of it just kind of snowballed very quickly the rain stopped it got dark the crowds dispersed we had some some looting some violence by the time we put our plan in place it was already almost 11 o'clock today we're meeting at noon we're going to have a plan in place by one o'clock and we're going to have all of our moving parts i just got off the phone with lieutenant governor pam evett yes and um, i've been speaking with columbia about having the national guard ready in case we need them i hope it doesn't come to that and i really don't think it will but we need to make sure we have reinforcements in place in case we have bad actors that come back that want to degrade our city. I have a feeling that 95% of the people that committed any crimes last night didn't live in the city of Charleston. I really don't believe they did. Uh, but how do we protect ourselves to make sure that doesn't happen again? We set up officers at the perimeter of the, of the peninsula. We make sure that we're monitoring who's coming and going. Um, and we, we prepare this afternoon for tonight, not prepare tonight for the inevitable if it happens. Uh, we have to prepare like tonight will be like last night. But because of all of the positivity that's happened yesterday during the rally and today with three more rallies, plus all of the hard work put in by our citizens, right. we don't need to have any rioting, rioting or looting tonight. We have proven that we're a resilient bunch in Charleston. Charleston always comes out, the best of Charleston comes out during times of adversity. I always say that. Yes. We're a very resilient city. And we'll get through this tonight as well. And hopefully we won't have any bad actors come in our city. Harry J. Griffin, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Pulse Ups. Thank you, Quentin. It's always good to be back. Likewise. Yes, sir.